Joining me now is Revi Tal Kokovsky, the Deputy CEO of the International March of the Living. What can you tell us about the March of the Living overall? Hello, Erin. Uh, we are celebrating our 35th anniversary today uh, with 10,000 participants that are come from all four corners of the globe. We have people today from Australia to Brazil, from Argentina to Germany, uh, people that are Jews and many of them are non-Jews. Uh, the International March of the Living was, was founded under the basis that the Holocaust is not just a Jewish issue, it's a universal issue. And we need to educate the world at large about the lessons of the Holocaust and they need to fight racism and anti-Semitism. Can you elaborate a little bit more about what is special about today's March of the Living? I think the most special thing about the March today is that we have 40 Holocaust survivors from across the world leading this march. They will be the first to march uh, and lead the 10,000 participants. And for us, the survivors are like our hearts. I mean, we are here to hear, hear the story from them and to pass it to the next generation. Uh, Elie Wiesel, who were in the 1990 march here, told us that when you listen to a witness, you become a witness. And what we do at the March of the Living is creating living witnesses to carry the torch of memory after the survivors are no longer be with us. Absolutely. During the march, will they have time? Will they be able to interact with some of the young participants? You have to understand that the march is a peak of a seven-day journey throughout Poland. They're visiting the ghettos, the camps, the synagogues, the cultural institutes. They're exploring 10,000 year, uh, 1,000 years of Jewish life, and they're spending time with the survivors on a long journey. The march is the peak of it. They're marching shoulder to shoulder, and 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 they hear the story from there. They're there for them. They're hugging them, and this is what is so special about the March of the Living. My own daughter attended the 2011 March of the Living, and I have to say, she was very impacted by it. Is that what you hear from the younger participants? Yes. Uh, also, we, we've conducted long-term impact research uh, about the, the participants of the march. And what we've learned that people who are coming from the march are coming back more tolerant people. They're, they're more activist towards fighting hatred in all of its forms. Uh, they're more connected to the Jewish identity and heritage. So the march has a, a long-term impact about the participants on a personal and also on a communal life that they're doing and they're going back to the community as a change agent of torch barrier of Holocaust memory. What about you personally? You've been involved in the International March of the Living for some time. How do you feel on successive visits back here? This will be my 15th March. Um, I was born on January 6th, the very same day my grand-grandfather, Angelo Sonino of Rome, was killed here in Auschwitz. So I feel very connected to the place and through March of the Living I also met my husband who was a journalist who came to cover the March of the Living and we met her and here and, and later he went to tutor groups to Poland. So the Holocaust is very much a family uh, uh, thing to us. It's personal. And I'm very proud to be with the International March of the Living and safeguarding Holocaust memory. Do you ever find that it's too much? Your entire life, your profession, your family, you're oriented around this place. You know, Erin, many people ask me about this. And my answer is no, it's never too much for me. I feel so privileged to be able to do what I'm doing. I can't get enough of spending time with Holocaust survivors, hugging them, listening to them. I feel that it's a great, great privilege and I'm honored to do what I'm doing. Are you concerned, I'm sure you are, about the fact that, I mean, today we are so lucky 40 Holocaust survivors are here, about the day that will come when time will have passed and they won't be able to join us. Of course we're concerned and I don't think the world is ready for the day without survivors. Uh, but what we're doing here at the March of the Living, as I said, we are creating uh, new witnesses and uh, people who will take the torch of memory and carry it to the next generations. Tremendously, this is our mission. Tremendously important work. Revi Tal Krakowski, thank you so much for taking the time to explain this to us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron.